going on guys? Christian here from CK Wraps. Today I'm going to show you how to install Vivid's new color fusion on the door of my Jeep. You're probably wondering why the door is not on the Jeep right now. That's because I removed the hinges so I can wrap it properly. And when you remove the hinges, it doesn't mount to the door or the frame anymore. So I have it all resting on this bumper stand. You might be asking, what is color fusion? Color fusion is a cosmetic paint protection film. What is the benefit of cosmetic paint protection film? You're probably wondering. It's paint protection film with color. Basically, you'll never have any scratches in your surface or in your wrap anymore. This is great, super beneficial for gloss colors, especially like black or dark colors that show a lot of scratches, but it's also beneficial for my Jeep, which I take off-roading and it gets scratches from tree branches and things like that all the time. I just removed the chrome wrap and it was scratched up really badly. Okay, so what you wanna do with a vehicle with any panel for that matter, is you want to prep it with isopropyl alcohol. Make sure you wipe everything down nice and clean. You're going to see some areas that don't look quite clean. That's just water running from my mirror, which is corroding on the inside, um, the aluminum, and it's dripping down and staining my paint. I'm sure I could buff that out, but I'm going to be wrapping over top of it anyways. Oh yeah, the paint protection film is basically stain proof as well. And we're going to measure end to end. Now this roll is 60 feet long, full roll, and five feet tall or 60 inches tall, roughly. So, and top to bottom, we're looking at about 49, 50 inches. That's giving ourselves a little extra. Let's go 51, 52 inches. And then left to right, we're looking at a total width of, well, if we go end to end, we're looking at about 38 inches. Let's go around 42, 43, give ourselves a little extra on the ends. It's very important that we have extra. Let's blow off the surface regardless to make sure that we don't have any loose particles or debris kicking around, especially in like little holes and stuff like that where you don't really wash inside of. When we remove the release liner, that's gonna create a lot of static and that static will end up drawing in loose particles. So, plug your ears. All right, this is where you're gonna see the color and the finish. Nice. Okay, so I can take this and I can, it's already mostly glassed out at the top section of the door here. So we can take this now and we can start squeezing some of this out. I'm gonna work my way from the body line. I'll end up picking that up so you can see how it picks up after sit sitting there. You can see the air re release works really well. Don't squeeze you over massive bubbles, you know, especially when you get closer to the edges, like here. You might as well just let the air out, just like that. A little bit there as well, just a little tiny lift. Makes your life way easier, trust me. Let's go over here, there's a little bit more air over here, and here. Some right there, and there's a little bit right there. Beauty, let's get this one out. And then, yeah, if you want to push down on some of them, go for it. Just don't squeeze you over massive bubbles. Be, it's not really worth the effort, trust me. Let's go over here. I move around. I'm starting to notice a few more spots with a bit more air. Let's come squeeze you right across there. Even that out. And we can go right into that recess right there. And let's flatten out the rest now. Okay, so that's a huge bubble there. Let's flatten out the rest. I'm not gonna pull this very hard at all. Let's lift that up. So see how nicely it lifts? It's beautiful. It flops around like, I don't know, it's like tissue. It's beautiful. Okay, we're gonna divide up our areas here. We're gonna come right through here. Oops, it's okay, didn't increase it or anything. Keep your squeegee on a sharper angle than I just had it. Okay, that's okay, I'm gonna do that again. The film squeegees differently because it's a TPU. So that's one thing to keep in mind. It just feels different. When I push down on these, I'm not getting any blue lines or anything along those lines. Let's go and lift. I need to lift that up. Probably not. Let's push down on those. Excellent. Work the air out from here. 
Just go palm into the recess right there. Nice. Go over everything. That's a little bit of air there. I'll have to pierce a hole there afterwards. We can work this into here. Right, let's go through here now. Work our air out that end. Nice. All right. So I'm gonna end up lifting this corner up just to reset it. There we go. Just let it stick to my fingers. And this is probably gonna be the fastest way so again, since it's a large flat panel, this is where you're gonna end up getting air trapped, and this will happen with any film. Pliability of the film is incredible. It's actually mind-blowingly incredible. I can't even believe how pliable it is. Like I feel like I don't even have to, have to use a heat gun to wrap a bumper probably. Like that's crazy. I did wrap a mirror without using any heat. So it could be doable for a bumper as well. Just imagine that, you don't even have to ever take out a heat gun. It's pretty crazy. I'm not saying to not heat it at all. I'm just saying you probably could get away with wrapping most of the car without a heat gun. So here's a good opportunity to end up using a glove. Let's do that. Now, right now, the temperature in my shop is 20 degrees Celsius. Check that beauty out. Incredible. My finger's just getting stuck on it because I'm pressing firmly. Check that out. This is game changing, man. Game changing, how pliable that is, wow. See, and now I've wrapped where Jeep decided they didn't want to put any paint. So that's why I removed the hinges. Let's go here, this one. I'm barely even trying. Fall through, make sure we get all that air out of there. Let's go through here. It's like a joke. Now this isn't the easiest thing in the world to install, but this, the pliability of the film sure makes it seem super, super easy. Wow, okay, like that's, that went down super nice, okay? There we go. The knife doesn't like to cut it, and this is a fresh blade, I'll even snap one off again. But I'm using, uh, of black blades and I'm not using the 30 degree blades in case you notice I'm using the standard angle blades because I find that these are better at cutting paint protection film just overall like clear cosmetic anything so we're gonna try and add a little bit of pressure here and then cut through try and keep it sort of tight and that gives you a better cut but again, if you feel like your blade's not cutting it, it's probably because it's just not a sharp enough blade. So get the sharpest blades that you can get when it comes to doing this stuff. All right, I can take that, stick that there. Again, I still haven't used a heat gun yet. We're gonna do in here, I can probably even stretch into here without a heat gun. But we're gonna do all in here. We're gonna cut out the window section. I'm just trying to get a feel for where the trim is. I'm gonna cut out some, we can always cut out more afterwards. It's better to leave yourself enough, just in case you make a mistake. All right, I'm gonna put my glove on my other hand. And we're gonna work some of this in, again, with no heat. You don't need to. Right up to that 
my trim piece. See what I'm doing with my left hand here? I'm just pushing inwards, and that's kind of feeding. It's feeding the film into these areas. It creates less tension. Don't want to push my door off the bumper stand. Almost did. I have a black rubber trim that goes over top of that, and it sits right down into that valley. So I'm not worried about getting full coverage there. It's not important. I've already gone further than I need to. Now I have to choose how much film I want to tuck in behind my rubber trim. Let's trim some more this way because I didn't take off the rest of the rubber trim. So what you want to do first is if you can't see, so here I can see a really defined edge. I know where my trim meets the panel. Over here, it's too soft. I can't see anything. So I'm going to make sure that I am able to see before I do any final cutting. I want to make sure you know where that trim is. That's okay? super, super important. So now I can see a very definitive edge going all the way around other than right here, which is okay because I know here the trim runs down that way and there's a little black plastic cover that goes in here. This is okay for now. When I cut, I'm gonna try and pull the film towards my knife. So we're gonna go like this. I could have put masking tape on my trim, but I'm not really worried about it. It's all scratched up by branches and stuff anyways. It's my car, so I'm not terribly concerned about it. It's destroyed from off-roading. but I don't want to gouge out any of the rubber. And to be honest, I'm not even touching it. Okay. All right, so what's next? Well, I'm gonna start tucking that stuff in. So we're gonna lift off of the rubber trim, just like this. And at this point, we can start tucking the film in behind the rubber trim. So what we need to do is we just need to get something behind it, like our squeegee. There we go. And I want to work it in there because this trim doesn't sit very nicely. So I do want to get in there pretty deep with this. Because I know that at certain angles, you'll be able to see the red far enough right now, but just letting you know like that, I don't have to wrap all the way to that edge. But if I don't wrap far enough in, it will show certain angles. These are important things to pay attention to before you wrap your car or anyone else's car is like, check your gaps and like see how far you may need to wrap into them. Super important stuff. Just got some bubbles going on here, so I'm just gonna there we go. Couldn't get in there with my finger, so I got in there with the squeegee instead. So I'm just leading with my thumb. Come back the other way now. And then here's the last part of that. So we can probably just go right into there. I'm not even using a glove. It's matte finish, so your finger doesn't stick to it as much. And no heat gun, again. Yeah, if you need a heat gun, go ahead. Just it'll help soften the film a little bit. Just cut very lightly there. That's okay because that all gets covered by a plastic cap, so I don't care if it shows a little bit of red. My 
this. All right, let's cut this little square out. Now, one thing I will do for sure, and I will never not do this, is heat my edges and roll them around. I will always heat the edges. It's not a bad, it's not a good idea to not heat your edges when you're finishing them off. Okay, let's do some cutting. I'm gonna start, start wherever you're comfortable. I'll start here. I'm keeping the film tight. I'm running the back side of my knife along the edge. If you hear any squeaking, that's just the TPU. It's the film. Because it's more rubbery, right? So it has like a squeaking sound to it. My knife's doing a great job of cutting this. You can wrap around further if you'd like to. This is just how far I always go. Pulling down and away, you can see with my left hand. You should never have to force your knife. have to force your knife you're going to be doing some damage so pause if you hit something and then readjust your blade or your angle let's make sure that that's covered yeah cool. everything gets heated again afterwards so always a roll of thumb let's cut that way first here. And it goes off. There we go. Coming on this one. piece right here there we go that all comes off start on one spot work your way around to the same spot again just so you're thorough this is going to seal up the edge but it also cleans it up because after i cut you can see actually here it's not not perfect looking right there so when we heat it and then we go over it, cleans it up really nicely. On the other side, it's going to be perfectly, pretty much per perfectly straight. It's just that vinyl is sort of hanging off after cutting. So you have to go over it and make sure it all stays down. I'm doing about two passes now. And like I said, you'll notice that I haven't done any post seating on, on in this recessed areas, but I'm doing. The, I'm not posting it because I want to push the limit of the film. I want to see what it can take and how negligent someone can be if they do the most basic installation. Um, if they use the most basic installation procedure how long or how well the film will hold up to that. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of do going more, but you know, a lot of people just don't. So I want to see what, it's, what it can take. Okay. And that is the door raft. Nothing else to do on this door other than what I had shown you. Just cut out your extra holes reinstall your trim pieces and your clips and your mirrors and your door handles, all the rest of the stuff. And that's pretty much it. 
I'm gonna be moving on to some more videos for you guys. Look forward to doing these videos for you. Again, thank you for watching as always. I appreciate it. Take care.